Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at a brand new 2023 Cedar Creek 311 RL 5th wheel by Forest River RV. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you through the inside and the outside of the camper. Then we'll close it all up at the end and show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, we are up inside the brand new 2023 Cedar Creek 311 RL fifth wheel here. We're going to spin our way through the downstairs area, head upstairs, then we'll head right on back outside. So first things up, we have a whole new look on the interior for 2023. So you have new lighting hardware. New cabinet colors, new countertops, new floor, new slide out floor material as well. That new woven, well not new, but the woven material stuff they use on like pontoon boats instead of carpet. It's a lot more durable. So looking over here, we have our door side or awning side slide out here. So nice big slide. You have freestanding dinette with four chairs. You have two traditional chairs, which do have some storage built in, and you have two fold up chairs. There is an extension on the end of the table there. You have the Thomas Paine Furniture Collection here. You have power theater seat, does have some storage and cup holders in the middle, USB charger port on each arm as well. All these windows down here open. You have day and night roller shades on the windows downstairs. Hundred and ten volt ceiling fan upstairs instead of a twelve volt version. You can see our Coleman AC system here, ducted. Large overhead cabinets across the back there. Tons of storage. Sofa here flips out, and makes into a large bed. Give you kind of a quick view here of kickback in your nice recliner here after a nice long day of adventure checking out your tv checking up the local news you got electric fireplace here it's basically a fancy electric space here little shelf space up there and also a sound bar as well the tv is still on a swing arm so you can unlatch it and maneuver it around Now we're going to check out the back of this. This is pretty cool right here. I'll set down this camera here just to kind of show you this real quick. But this actually opens up. So there is a latch down there that you got to unlatch, but then this comes open for all kinds of counter or cabinet space. So you got some place on the back of the swing door here space in here electric outlet in here down below is your tv antenna booster uh, cable satellite hookups another electric outlet down here and then this bottom actually can come off for maintenance and you can see your little hook latch down there this is a fastened with a magnetic latch basically uh, just for when you're letting it go at the campsite I guess you'd say um, but you got a latch down there for travel the island looks completely different compared to last year's version as well um, we're gonna set back down the camera here I want to show you this as well you can see the little 
wood siding here. This actually will flip up. There's a magnet that kind of holds that down as well. And then it has a little swing out arm there to hold it in place. There's one on the other side too, but that is pretty cool. Gives you either more counter space or, you know, another little seating area if you have an extra guest or two or something. You can kind of see how they round that down. LED light strip down there. But pretty cool and easy just to flip this around and then it drops back down. For the kitchen area here, we have the large graystone oven and four burner stovetop. You have the little light up knobs. It does have a light inside the oven as well. You have drawer space and a little cabinet space on each side there. New backsplash as well for this year. Large microwave here with storage all around there as well. Kind of see the counters there a little bit. Now this one was also ordered with the dishwasher feature. So we have dishwasher here instead of an extra drawer, but this comes right on out. And then you have drawer space and some cabinet space down below as well. High rise spring sprayer faucet here. You have an undermount double bowl sink and it has these little strainer covers here. This one was ordered with the gas and electric nor cold refrigerator. 18 cubic foot, again, works on propane or electricity. The normal refrigerator is a residential fridge with an inverter and it does have an ice maker in it. So depending on your camping habits, you may want this gas electric version or you may want a residential version. You have a little more counter space over here. There is an electric outlet on the side of the counter a little LED light down there as well. Large kind of pantry area. The left side is deeper than the right side. And then looking up top there, a large turbo exhaust fan as well. Give you a quick look here. Tabletop again, different. Couple little things here. Tire pressure monitoring system to monitor the tires while you're driving down the road. This is a very cool safety feature. This one was ordered with the four camera security or four camera observation system. So you have a seven inch monitor and then you have a camera on the back, two down each side and one above the entry door. Very nice feature to have. Um, you can also get a little electric adapter from Furion's website, allowing you to plug in that monitor inside the RV and use that to kind of see around your camper as well. That's pretty cool. There is a central vac dustpan vac system down here at the steps. So you can sweep everything in or get the hose system out and suck it up either way. Propane leak detector down there, along with your electric box with your breakers and fuses. Some more USB charger ports here, and you also have the control for the turbo exhaust fan. Little coat hook thing going on here as well. Sensor for the AC system. We have solar charge controller here. Go power, 30 amp solar charge controller. Firefly system, very cool setup here. Um, we'll go through this at the end when we come back in to close things up, but a lot of nice stuff here. Then you have your ceiling fan light switch. Looking at the entry door here, a wider entry door. 
um, traditional screen door portion, but you do have a little peephole looking out instead of a window. You'll also see some of the light switches around the RV will have these up and down arrows on them and that will allow you to dim or brighten the lights. Now going up the hallway here, we have our bathroom area here on the left. So some little robe hook holders here. You have a turbo exhaust fan again in here. Skylight up above. Um, air conditioner vent in here. Quite a bit of storage space, pretty deep storage area for your linens and stuff in there. Porcelain foot flush toilet. Some storage underneath your sink area. And some little medicine cabinet area there as well. Different backsplash, different sink this year as well. Shower is going to look a little different. You do have a one-piece molded fiberglass shower with a sit-down seat, sliding glass panels, and then your shower head compartment area here, a little different. Going on up this direction, we have our master bedroom. So camper king bed. Now this bed will raise up. So there is storage underneath it here. You have a window on each side of the bed. Those windows do open. Little shelf space above the windows as well. So you have USB charger port and electric outlet on each side of the bed. So you can plug in a CPAP machine, your cell phone, whatever you need to. Looking up here at the ceiling, we have our other Coleman air conditioner. Now this customer ordered it with carpet in the bedroom area here. Standard is linoleum. Carpet, rebond carpet padding is an option. Um, so you can get it either again, carpet or linoleum, depending on what you prefer. Up front, you have a really large closet here. Over here on the right, there is washer dryer hookups. So you got your drain, your hot and cold water lines, electric outlets and stuff. Big shelf space here in the back section. So you can stash a lot of stuff back here behind your clothes as well. Now, when you do the washer dryer, it is actually designed to remove this lower section here. And the washer dryer sets up inside there. One on each side, basically. Back in here as well is the King Wi-Fi Connect prep setup. But this is a pretty large closet. Again, guys, don't forget to check out the folks at Couches RV Nation. They are one of the largest internet discount dealers in the country. Will definitely save you a lot of money if you're looking. Four drawers. The top here actually flips open as well. So a little bit of hidden storage for maybe a few valuables. A electric heater, basically. So you got a little space heater up here. So you have your propane furnace, space heater here. This is an option if you want it. You can get it. If not, don't. Uh, but then you also have that electric fireplace down there. You have 12-volt heat pads on your holding tanks. So they're really gearing this to also go more into that winter season as well. Heated enclosed underbelly. Again, option for dual-pane windows also. But overall, a nice, refreshing, bright look for this year over last so we do have a whole new look we're going to head outside i want to show you around the outside of the rv then we're going to come back in and close it up so we'll be right back on the outside all right we are back on the outside of the brand new 2023 
Cedar Creek 311 RL fifth wheel here. We're gonna start here on the door side, kind of spin our way around. So first things up, we have a high gloss gel coat fiberglass exterior. This is a hung fiberglass sidewall, not your typical glued together laminated sidewall that most RVs are done like. So a different cage construction than your traditional fifth wall that you'll find. Uh, so you actually have a lot more studs in the walls, roof and floor of a Cedar Creek than you do of many other brands. They're currently using the frameless look window on the outside here, and you do have an option for dual pane windows as well, if you're gonna be more of an extended stay or full-time RVer. That is an available option. You have power awning, LED light strip built in, adjustable arms for tilting for water runoff, and you also have a manual override in the front arm head in case of an electronic failure. Behind this first baggage door right here, you have two 30-pound propane tanks with your auto changeover regulator. Just down below is a gas line hookup where you could plug in a portable grill if you wanted to. You also have that pet-friendly leash latch holder here. And you have six-point automatic hydraulic leveling jacks. So you have two in the front, two just in front of the axles and two behind the axles you'll see as we walk around. <clears throat> baggage door on this side flips all the way up. It is a slam lock baggage door. Has a little holder right here to release it. You'll notice when you're actually picking up these baggage doors, they're heavier. They're a lot thicker, better insulated than your traditional lightweight style RV. Also, your baggage door handles are metal instead of plastic. Nice, large, tall pass-through storage compartment here. And basically, this has a drop Z frame, making it taller than your traditional straight frame that you'll find on a lot of mid-priced fifth wheels. Back in here, you have a light, you have cable and electric outlet, and a central vacuum set up here as well. You can also see some of that aluminum tube framing and stuff there. Now, just behind your entry door right here is another electric outlet and also a cold water spray port here as well. And then another new cool feature for them, a midship turn signal right here. That's a nice improvement there for safety. People beside you can kind of see if you're trying to get over. So definitely give them some props for doing that this year. You have a traditional RV entry door here. It is a little wider than some brands. Uh, so roughly 32 inch wide entry door where a lot of fifth wheels are 30 or 28 inches. Does not have a window in the door. It has a little peephole though. You do have the more ride step above entry step with shock assist. So this thing's real simple to flip up and down. You can see it in the picture there holding itself up. Um, but this comes down, touches the ground, rated for 500 pounds, where a traditional hover step is only rated for 300 pounds. So you have heavier duty step, doesn't shake, rock and roll, the RV is bad when you're running in and out. Large folding entry handle there to help you get in and out of the RV and also your model number located right there next to the entry door as well. Now, this customer ordered theirs with the uh, four camera security prep system kind of set up here. So this one has a camera above that porch light there. Again, you got LED light strip and a porch light both. That's kind of nice. Most only have one or the other, but you have that four camera up there. And then you also have a camera here going down each side and you'll have one on the back as well. So you got, again, one down each side, one above your entry door and one on the back. And there's a seven inch monitor that comes with it when you order it from the factory like this. And that will allow you to see around your vehicle when you are traveling down the road. And you can also get an aftermarket adapter to plug in that monitor and use it inside to see what's going on around the outside of your camper too. 
Now, this one was also ordered with the slide out awning topper covers. So you're seeing up there an awning that basically covers the top of the room. So it helps shade it, repel rain, water, things like that. Um, so you're kind of helping keep leaves, twigs, debris, all that stuff off the top of the RV. So when you do roll it in, you're less likely to damage something. Down below here, you have your dual axle setup here, drum brakes, aluminum wheels. It has the road armor suspension in the middle there, which is kind of like a shock absorber for RVs. Never adjust brakes, easy lube hubs. And they also have that tire pressure monitoring system as well. That's a nice feature, comes with another screen that you can plug in into your tow vehicle and see what's going on with your tires when you're traveling down the road. Coming on around to the back side here. Now looking underneath the back, you could see your spare tire under the rear here. That enclosed underbelly, it's a sectionalized underbelly, so you can take it apart easy in case of maintenance issues. You have a traditional flat back rear end here. Again, backup camera up in the top center there or observation camera so you can see what's going on behind you when you're traveling down the road. You do have the ladder coming down fairly low letting you get up onto the roof. This has a full walk on roof. Just make sure that you don't have anything sharp stuck in your shoes when you're up there so you don't damage your materials and stuff. But you can climb up there. Ladder's rated for 250 pounds. Climb up onto your roof, inspect your seams, seals, all that type of stuff. You can see in these pictures that are popping up that basically you've got all kinds of goodies up here. Solar panels, uh, air conditioners, TV antennas, plumbing stack vents. Everything needs sealed and maintained. Keep up with it, very, very important. Down below here, you have a traditional two inch hitch receiver back here. Now this is just a luggage rack type of hitch or bike rack type of hitch. It is not meant to tow a boat or anything like that. Coming on around to this side again, you can see up top there, slide out awning cover there. Gutters down both sides of the RV. Um, it does have the little three inch gutter extensions on it, but you'll notice a nice rollover transition there on the roof material and stuff versus a sharp terminated edge right at the roof line. Uh, so I do like that as well. Just help save that material a lot longer. Now coming down the side here, we have a stove exhaust up top here. Uh, it does have a little flapper in it, so you got to make sure that you do open that when you're in there cooking. You have two black panels on this particular unit. This is not the normal. Uh, this customer ordered it again with that Norcold gas and electric 18 cubic foot fridge. So when you use these absorption type fridges, um, they have to put these two panels here for one maintenance purposes, but mostly what they're really here for is heat exhaustion. Uh, these create a lot of heat and they have to be able to exhaust it out. So you'll have, hear a little fan and stuff that kick on in there sometimes, and that's basically trying to blow out all that heat created by the propane or the electric side of the fridge. Now the normal is a residential fridge with the inverter and an ice maker built in. So depending on what you order it with, you may or may not see these black panels here. Now if you do the residential refrigerator, and get that ice maker, there will actually be underneath the here an ice maker on off valve that you'll have to also remember to turn on when you want to use the camper or turn off when you're going to winterize it. Down below right here is your dump area. So everything comes out of one section right here. Also the dump hose holder is there as well. Now your handles for that dump are actually right here in the docking station. So I have my galley, I have my bath tank, have my toilet tank right here. So it's easy to pull selector valves for these slides. You can turn them on and off individually. These are hydraulic slides. They move a lot faster than electric, a little bit more reliable. Battery disconnect here. We have hot and cold outside utility shower, cable satellite inlets, 
direct our water which way we want it to go as far as filling the fresh tank, winterization valves, all that stuff here by this color coding stuff. Front cap light switch, uh, city water inlet, black tank flush, hot and cold low point water drains down here. Over here, you have your power cord reel. So you can put the end of your power cord up in there, hit the button, kind of roll it up. Baggage door here, slam lock baggage door. It is a swing door. Nicer over here because you don't have to worry about it getting caught up in your slide here when you run it in or you know, having to worry about the extra head height of the door kind of being blocked off by that. So a little nicer setup there as well. Um, detachable power cord here, 50 amp electric service, this cord is probably 25 or 30 feet long, roughly. Someday I'll measure it. I always forget to do that. 12 gallon gas and electric water heater here. You can see in the picture popping up, inch and a 16th drain plug in the lower middle. You have the electric switch in the lower left corner, pressure relief valve there in the top center. Relieve the pressure before you try to drain it, very important. Furnace exhaust out right here as well. And then again, that midship turn signal. Looking up top, there is a light up there so you can kind of see what's going on here at nighttime as well. Coming down this way, we have our battery compartment. So they set this up here with two batteries. There's room for probably three. Yeah, I'd say at least three. Uh, maybe four, depending on the size of the battery, but I'd say you could do up to three. Um, there is some little instructions here on how to wire batteries up to the system. Also, the jack controls for the auto level jack system here as well. And then your hydraulic pump reservoir here. And also a way to manually do things here as well. Over here, we have the jack control here for our auto level system or taking it on and off the truck. Just down below here, we have some really important informational stickers we're gonna pop up here. The first one popping up is your main production date sticker. This has your VIN number, axle size, um, production date, but most importantly here, gross vehicle weight. That's the most you can load the RV up to, axle weight, hitch weight, everything combined. Do not exceed that. That's very important. Next popping up is going to be your unloaded vehicle weight sticker. That's what the RV weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line. And it also has the length on it as well. Next cargo carrying capacity sticker here, basically telling you how much gear you can load into the RV before you exceed that gross weight on the first sticker. And last but not least, tire sticker here telling you tire size, but most importantly, tire pressure. Make sure you maintain your tire pressure. Remember this cold pressure number because you're gonna need to plug that into that tire pressure monitoring system that comes with the camper standard. Now up front here, you have a Rhino box hitch. So if you're gonna do the trail air or more ride or something like that, you have to make sure you get the version that bolts up to the Rhino box by Lippert. If you don't, your bolt pattern and stuff's not gonna line up properly. Up here, you have a huge storage compartment right here. So you got plenty of room to do different things in here. Uh, you can order these generator prepped as well, get generators assuming they're even available at the time of build. Um, and then back in behind there is also a little inspection panel uh, to kind of do some electrical stuff with the RV. Now back in buck up front here, we have the front cap. So heavy duty fiberglass front shell has three LED light strips built into it. So it kind of gives you a cool look at night. All right, we're gonna head back inside. I wanna show you around the inside closed up as well, kind of how that all works. So we'll be right back here on the inside again. All right, we are back up inside the brand new 2023 Cedar Creek 311 RL. 
beautiful new look here. But I want to close this up for you, show you what this thing looks like closed up. So when you are ready to do your closing or opening and all that type of stuff, you want to come in here to your main control panel here. This again, the Firefly system. So we'll go over a couple quick things here. So first things up, we have on our home screen, our battery meter. We have 12 volt tank heater button, water pump button, and the readouts for all of our holding tanks. These are not the old style probe readouts either. These are actually a lot more accurate sonar type of probe or sensor basically. Master on off light switch here. Just killed almost every light in the RV. Not all, but most. You can turn them all right back on as well. Come in here individually. Control the individual lights as well. One thing I forgot to mention on the home screen was one of our air conditioners as well. Go into the HVAC system here. So I can control AC1, AC2, furnace as well. Uh, if you do an optional heat pump or something like that, you could even control something like that as well. Next one, we are slides. This right here kind of telling us, you know, we need to do an unlock feature, which we don't need to go over right now, but uh, we can control our slides in and out right here. I can also control my awning in and out right here, and they are color coded as well. Come in here to settings. You can brighten and dim your screen, uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. You got some different controls in here as well. But the main thing here we're doing is closing up the RV. So first thing we're gonna do is close up the slides. And when we're doing this, we got to go to our slide button. We're gonna try to stretch across here and do this. So the first one that's gonna move, cause these are hydraulic slides and I have all the selector valves that are out near docking station left on. So what usually happens, the lightest slide kind of moves first. They go, hydraulic fluid kind of goes the path of least resistance. So it's gonna bring usually this slide out in and out first. So this is all the way in. It comes right in up against your dresser area. And I kept the door open for two reasons. One for video purposes, but also it just makes it easier to get in here when you do close up the slide. Otherwise, the door being that the bed comes in so far, doesn't fully open properly when the slide out is closed. So I prop it back. This allows me to get in here. I can pretty much do everything except get to my dresser when it's closed. So I could come in here, take a nap at a rest area. I could get into my closet if I needed to. And just a lot easier to do with the door propped open. Again, that does not interfere at all with the bathroom. So with the slides all closed, I can fully use my bedroom like that. I could fully use my bathroom. Now we're bringing in the slides the rest of the way here. Very important when you bring in these slides, make sure your floor's clean, your cabinets and stuff are all closed up. So we're gonna continue to retract. Our kitchen's moving next. Letting off the button here, just so you can see what this looks like. Got to make sure your sofa's pushed back far because it does get real close right here. Very tight fit. If you pull your sofa out too far, you could damage your sofa or your slide. Comes in real close. Same thing back there. You got to make sure those cabinets are closed. I'll bring it in the rest of the way. Very important, make sure your floor is clean because whatever is in the floor, these slides will run it right over. You don't want any rocks, pebbles, kids' toys, whatever that could rip your floor. So now we're all the way in again. The dinette table is screwed to the floor when it comes from the factory. Some people choose to unscrew that 
which would allow them to turn the table sideways and then walk back through here and a little bit over your sofa to get to the back if you needed to. Um, but it only takes a second to run these slides in and out. So depending on what you want to do, but you can also get to your refrigerator here. So stopping at a rest area, I come in or grocery store, load my refrigerator, wash my hands if I needed to. I could come in here, use the bathroom. And if I prop the door open, I could comfortably get into the bed. Now, when you're ready to go back out, we're going to just hit the extend button. And this changes up a little bit. Sometimes, most of the time, I should say, it's usually this slide going first. And again, it just goes straight back out. The pressure is released on the back slides as well if you don't have the selector valves changed. Now, while we were talking there, this backslide also started to go out, but you'll notice it's the opposite of the way it came in. This one right here on the left is going out second, and then the one on the right is gonna go out next. So it just kind of depends on the way it's flowing. And again, selector valves outside you can shut on and off whichever room you don't want to use if you're just trying to bump something out. Thanks again, folks, for taking the time to watch my RV videos. Really do appreciate it. We will be doing a lot more of these new 2023s as they roll in. Thanks again.